draw the graphs for acceleration versus time, velocity versus time and displacement versus time for the following scenario. An object is thrown upwards with an upwards initial velocity of 7 meters per second off a building that is 43 meters high. So let's briefly draw that. Here's our building. Okay, that's a skew building. Here's our building. And it's a bit better. Person standing here throwing something upwards into the air. It goes up and then it seems to fall back down towards the ground. Okay, now they tell us that the initial velocity is equal to 7 meters per second. They also tell us that the height of the building, this height, is equal to 43 meters. 43 meters. That means from when it left the guy's hand till it reaches the ground, that displacement is 43 meters. Not from the maximum height, but actually from the point where it was launched. That displacement is 43 meters. Okay. So one thing that we are going to have to do is we have to draw the acceleration versus time graph and we are going to have to calculate how long was this journey, how long did it take for uh, the object to have this displacement. Okay, so we are first going to have to calculate time given initial velocity. Acceleration, of course, is uh, since upwards is positive, will be negative 9,8 meters per second squared. And also now, because upwards is possible, uh, positive, this displacement is from the top downwards, so that's also negative. So if we use this formula, delta x is equal to initial velocity times time plus a half acceleration times time squared, it's got all the variables that I need in order to calculate the time that it took for it to reach the bottom. Okay, so let's go substitute in there and see what we get. We know that this is negative 43 is equal to 70 plus a half times a would be 4 comma negative. Negative 4 comma 9t squared. And now to solve that you can see it's a quadratic equation so we get 40 4 comma 9t squared minus 7 t minus 43 is equal to 0. Okay, I need to put that in two brackets but this is going to be way too difficult so rather I'm going to use my quadratic formula. So time is equal to negative b which is negative 7 which will be positive 7 plus minus the square root of b squared that 7 negative 7 squared is 49 minus 4 times a which is negative 43 so that uh, sorry, 4 times a is 4 comma 9 times 43, but negative 43. So negative 43 will make this a positive. And all of that is divided by 2 times a, which is 4.9. Okay, with that in mind, we can go ahead and solve this using our calculator. Okay, so again, first of all, we do the interior of this square root and we get 49 plus 4 times 4.9 times 43 is equal that's the interior of this take the square root there we go that's 29 is the square root in here then I'm going to take put this in my memory store store that in memory so that I can say 7 minus my memory recall recalling the memory that I stored is equal to negative 22 divided by 2 times 4.9 will be 9.8 divided by 9.8 again and that gives me at negative 2 comma 3 3 2 seconds that means that's so let's leave it at 3 3 that's that's negative time in other words that's backwards in time we can't do that that's totally unscientific okay so let's do it with the plus that's going to give us the positive now we have 7 plus the memory recall that we stored is equal to, the, that's the numerator divided by the denominator that was 9.8 gives us 3,76 3, 
seconds okay so after 3 comma 76 seconds since we're working on a graph rounding to two decimal places should be fine so let's round it a little bit more 3 comma 8 seconds cool that's how long this whole journey will last so let's go draw our graph of course acceleration versus time stays constant it doesn't matter at what time we are measuring acceleration it will be a constant negative 9.8 so in order to draw this graph, since this is a constant negative 9.8, doesn't matter where we measure it on the graph, um, it would be at negative 9.8, so from here onwards, okay, that's not very accurate, from here onwards for 3.8 seconds. So that's two, four, six, no, that's two and a half, five, seven and a half, so just a little bit further than that. Okay, so there we go. More or less that should do it. Okay, 9.8. 9.8 should be more or less there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, the next one is the velocity versus time. Well, one thing that we do know is that its initial velocity is 7 meters per second. So we know that we are going to start more or less that's 5, 6, uh, Two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's six. That's eight. So it should be here in the middle. Uh, from there, it's going down somewhere. So I'm just going to plot it at some point. Now, there's two ways I can do it. I only need two points. I already know for how long I should do it. I should end at three comma eight seconds. Okay, that's how long the journey lasts. So I can either choose to work out the maximum height okay the velocity how long will it take to reach the zero uh, velocity or I can go and work out what would be the velocity in the end in other words after 3.8 seconds what would be the velocity so let's go work out both so I want to use future velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time and in that formula I am substituting initial future velocity with zero because I'm working out how long will it take to reach the maximum height? Okay, zero is equal to seven minus nine comma eight t. So t is equal to um, nine comma eight t is equal to seven. So t is equal to seven divided by nine comma eight. Let's work out what that. What is that? Okay, so that's seven divided by nine point eight should be close to point seven is equal to 0.71 yes so 0.7 so I can at 0.7 this is uh, um, that's 5 that's 7.5 so it's about there so I must go through that point which means if I draw my graph I should go through that point Do you see how I'm now going through that point okay I'm passing through that point that's at about 7 maybe a little bit higher and then I must also end my graph at 3.4 3.8 seconds so 3.8 seconds will take my graph to about there okay now I can see I'm passing through just before uh, 0.75 there I'm passing through and I'm going to about 0.8 that looks good to me okay let's see if that estimation was good enough uh, if I were to do final velocity let's work out final velocity if I have initial velocity of 7 minus negative 9.8 times time at 3.8 seconds okay so we have 7 minus 9.8 times 3.8 equals negative 30.24 negative 30 about so in other words there's negative 20 negative 25 this should be negative 30 so if you see look at that we are almost there we can actually just go there why not just go down a little bit up to negative 30 that's perfect that's a very good estimation but you only need to do one of the two the the question is set up so that it will mark a, a close approximation correctly Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's go down to the next question. 
displacement versus time. We know displacement versus time is a parabola. Okay, so we have to draw a parabola based on the information that we have. And to draw a parabola using this question, we first plot the turning point and then we plot the next point. Okay, so probably what we are going to have to do is first find the where it reaches its maximum height. Okay, now we've already calculated that in our previous question. It reaches its maximum height at 0.7 seconds. So if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it will reach it somewhere on this line. But now we just need to know how high will it be when it reaches um, that point. And obviously we simply use the formula for displacement. For displacement we are using the formula that initial velocity times time plus accel uh, half acceleration times time squared will do. And initial velocity here being 7, time when I'm reaching that maximum height is at 0, 0,714 uh, blah 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 blah, that thing I just calculated in the previous question times half acceleration is negative 9.8 times 0, 0,7 squared. Now you'll notice that here okay so let's go calculate that 7 times 0 0.7 plus 0 0.5 that's the half times 9.8 with a negative times 0 0.7 squared is equal to 2.5 2.5 meters is its maximum height okay which means this is one two three four five this is divided up into five so each line is two so at 0 0.7 that is nine eight seven I must go up two and a half so more or less there okay and then I must plot my other point now one thing that we do know is that our initial velocity was zero so I can just put it there and this would this would be it. Another thing that I do know is that this thing is how high? How high was this building? Let's go back. 43 meters. In other words, after 3.8 seconds, 3.8 seconds is 3.1234567. There's 3.8 seconds. I must be at 43 meters okay so I'm a little bit off here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one to 3.8 which is there and to 43 which is 42 around about there in the half so there I must go up there yeah oh, here we see we're still going through zero we're still seeing our initial velocity is zero going through a maximum height here and just ending exactly it's it you get a more accurate sketch when your second point is a little bit further away from from your first point that would be a little bit more accurate so I'm very happy this is my uh, displacement versus time graph you can see I reach my maximum height come back to to the ground and um, this should be at 1.4 because it it takes twice as long uh, reaches the maximum height come back to where the boy launched it and then it starts falling down and reaches 43 meters displacement after 3.8 seconds. Okay, ignore this backwards part. Unfortunately, we can't uh, program this question to to eliminate that part, but just ignore, ignore that part. It was uh, good explaining this question to you. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.